I was 23 years old, I graduated from the University of Iowa. I wanted to do social entrepreneurial work. A uh, social entrepreneur is a person who uses business and entrepreneurial skills to try to solve social problems. I was bright-eyed, I was bushy-tailed, I wanted to change the world. But I realized at that point that I had a really big shortcoming, and that was that I wanted to change the world, but I had absolutely no freaking clue how it worked. Meaning that I had never left the United States. In an attempt to fix that, I began to look around at opportunities to travel. I could volunteer for the Peace Corps in Africa, I could backpack across Europe, I could teach English in China. I looked at all these options and I couldn't pick just one, so I decided I'd try them all. I'd attempt a trip around the world. Now, the problem was I didn't have any money. In fact, I owed the federal government about $25,000 in student loans, which, if you think about it, is actually a really good reason to leave the country. <laughs> so I took a job, a really normal job, and I saved money for three years. And in 2006, I quit my job, sold all my things, and with a backpack, a virgin passport, and a one-way ticket to China, I left. The goal was to go around the world for a year. Four years later, I came back. I hung out with movie stars and slum dwellers, shaman and scientists, poets and entrepreneurs in 40 different countries. And I want to tell you what I saw. In 2008, the world went through a fundamental shift, a shift not seen since the Great Depression. We've entered a new era. We don't have a name for it because it just started, and some of us don't even realize it's here. This era is defined by the globalization of the individual. If the 20th century was about corporations and industry globalizing, allowing these companies to create almost anything they could imagine and reach a global audience. The 21st century is providing that opportunity to almost all individuals. This is a map of 10 million people on Facebook, lines that represent the connections between them and their friends. One point to think about is there are no lines on this map that drive, draw borders of countries or continents. This is simply a blank black space of lines connecting dots on the globe. This new era that we're entering is being driven by a change that's happened in the last 10 years, and that is the democratization of creativity and entrepreneurship. What I mean by this is that if you have an idea in your head for something that you want to create, a book, a blog, an invention, a widget, an app, a video series about hamsters. The barriers to entry to create your idea and find an audience have just collapsed. It has never been easier to start and to find an audience for your idea. 3D printing, crowdfunding, Wikipedia, Etsy, social media, none of this existed when I graduated from college. And most of it didn't exist when today's seniors set foot on campus during their freshman year. Another thing that I learned traveling around the world is that geography does not have a monopoly on good ideas. Well, the smart people don't live in Silicon Valley. But places like Silicon Valley and New York, Boston and London, they do have an advantage. Some geographies are better at unlocking latent entrepreneurial and creative talent and turning ideas into reality. Why is that? In order to understand that, we have to step back for a second and think about the purpose of cities. And when I say cities, I mean big cities like New York, and I mean smaller cities like Reading and Cedar Rapids. When cities were first formed was in an age when we were all farmers and hunters. Cities' purpose was trading hubs. In the 19th and 20th century, cities found a new role. There were places for factories, for commerce, and for jobs. And in today's age, cities still serve those purposes, but today in the 21st century, cities are also drivers of innovation and creativity. 
To understand why exactly that is, we also have to step back for a second and think about for a moment, what is creativity? For our purposes today, I'm going to offer a definition up that creativity is the synthesis of diverse elements. So if you want to increase your creative ability, you need to increase diverse inputs and get better at synthesizing them into new ideas. Steven Johnson, in his pretty notable book, Where Good Ideas Come From, makes the argument that an idea is actually physically and literally a network. That the little bits and bobs rolling around in your head are the synapses and the neurons that collide with each other in the real world, in, in, in your brain, and that's where new ideas come from. Now this happens in the privacy of your own mind, but it also happens in your built environment around you. So the experiences that you have every day, the ideas that you hear, the conversations that you have, and the things that happen to you all go into this primordial soup that creates ideas in your head and in, in your life. Johnson also goes on to talk about the invention of the coffee shop, environments like this that are ideal places to foster new ideas, creative ideas, because ideas are allowed to collide, recombine, connect, bump into each other. Environments like this are also places where those ideas can find the resources they need to become something real. Investors, mentors, knowledge, experience, builders, designers, writers, whatever it takes to take that idea to a reality. The cities and the communities that will thrive the most in our world today will be the ones that make ideas happen. Now, this is something that I learned on my trip around the world, which in 2010 brought me back to the United States. I came back to the US looking for a social problem to try to solve, and I found it right where my journey began, in Iowa. A disaster that turned into an interesting opportunity. In 2008, Cedar Rapids, Iowa was hit by massive floods, the fourth worst natural disaster in US history. But it was a blessing in disguise because it gave Cedar Rapids a two-year head start on the recession. <laughs> and the opportunity for the city has turned into a renaissance. The city itself and the community is spending more than one and a half billion dollars to rebuild nearly everything. And when I saw this disaster, I saw also in it an opportunity to play a part in rebuilding an American city. So in 2011, with a friend of mine, Amanda Styron, we co-founded an organization called Seed Here Studio. It's a company that asked a, a, a pretty fundamental question. How do you bake into a city an ethos of creativity and entrepreneurship in a place not known for such things? The mission of Seed Here Studio is to cultivate the conditions and community that give entrepreneurs and creatives the best possible chance to thrive. In essence, to try to create a space like this but not just in coffee shops, in neighborhoods, in a community, in a city, and in a region. We didn't know what we were doing, we just started. And we started with what we knew, which was a cup of coffee. We found a couple other people that were working on ideas, and we said, hey, if you're interested in ideas and creativity, why don't you come together and join us for coffee? Those coffees, first one, six people showed up then 12 at the next one, then 27, then 42, and then 60. And then people kept showing up. And then we realized there was power in bringing people together and sharing ideas and helping each other out and encouraging each other. And that congregating led to co-working. Co-working is where people who work at for different companies and on different ideas get together and share a common workspace. Certainly there's, there's a value in sharing the rent and the copier and the Wi-Fi and the coffee, but more importantly, connecting with other people working on ideas and trying to make them happen. Those co-working opportunities led to collisions, collisions across generations and sectors and regions and areas 
of the city, some we wouldn't have expected and some which would have never happened otherwise. Those collisions turned into collaborations where small teams would form around ideas and interesting things would start to happen and those collisions would lead to the development of culture, a culture that said, we want you to create here no matter what your idea is. If you fail, it doesn't matter. Bruised, you'll start over again. Trust your crazy ideas. And that culture led to the formation of companies and organizations. These companies and organizations are the things that scale ideas, that get them out to a wider audience. And all of that added together, we created a physical, real, tangible, and measurable community. Now, as you look around and you hear about these things, these types of communities are called all sorts of things, startup communities, creative communities, entrepreneurial ecosystems. It doesn't matter the term. At the center of it are people dedicated to a collaborative environment and a culture that says we can create here. After two years of hard work, we raised our heads and we looked around, and we were surprised to find that we weren't the only ones doing this. In fact, all over the world, there are communities organizing. From Nashville to New Orleans, from Iceland to Istanbul, people everywhere were organizing communities, neighborhood by neighborhood, idea by idea, bit by bit, reorganizing the way our world works in this new era. And everyone's invited. So the most successful regions in this new age of creativity will be the communities that can best make ideas happen. So how do we start? Well, I'm standing on a stage talking about ideas with 500 of my closest friends. I feel like we've already started. But to understand what the steps are beyond that, Ask if, I want to ask one, fun, one final and fundamental question. What is a community? Is a community a geography? Is it a group of people? Is it a neighborhood? Is it a building? The definition I'll offer for our purposes today and what I've learned in my three years of working on this particular social problem is that a community is the sum total of all the conversations between people who share a common interest. So if you want to create a hockey community in your city, create more conversations around hockey. A group of people doesn't make a community. A group of people in a theater not talking is just a group of people sitting in a dark theater. But a group of people sitting in a theater talking about ideas and touting the potential of this place, well, that, to me, is a community. The thing is, the conversations can't end when the lights on the stage go out. You have to take the conversations and this idea of the possibility of this place out into the streets, into the coffee shops, into your places of work, and into your businesses and your homes. If you do this, if you foster conversations around creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and the possibility of this place, I think you'll find what we've found in just three years of our little experiment in Cedar Rapids is that ideas start to sprout. Tech startups, mural walks, nonprofit organizations, social groups, meetups, small businesses, and bookstores. And we've only been at it for a little bit of time. But what we've found is all of these people are reorganizing and redesigning our city, struck with a, with a whammy of a natural disaster, but reinventing the city for this new era. And what we know for sure is that a group of dedicated, committed people, citizens, who want to make the community a better place, whether it's 100 or 5, can foster game-changing ideas and bring them to reality anywhere in the world. It is not anybody else's responsibility, someone else's responsibility to build your community. If you feel like you need permission to participate, let me be the one to grant that to you. I'm not from around here. <laughs> and let me invite you to be part of this global conversation, locally, nationally, and globally, around how we can transform our communities. And if you're out there and you've got an idea, whether you're trying to create a blog or a book, a tech startup, a streetcar line, a music, a piece of music, a poem, or a trip around the world. There is no better day and no better place for you to start on it than today. Thank you very much.